to Amen. this word. Amen. John 15 and 14. Uh, that's where the text will be coming from. John 15 and 14. Uh, again, uh, we're in a sermon series entitled, This Thing is Personal. We want to talk about this thing being personal, your relationship with God. Yes. Uh, because truth be told, a lot of people don't have a bona fide relationship with God. Uh, some people, you know, they just have an acquaintance with God. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't they don't have that relationship. But uh, we're living in a time and a season where your relationship and your commitment to God is really going to show. Yes. So let's go to the book of John, chapter 15 and verse 14. It reads as this. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, no longer do I call you slaves. For the slave does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all these things I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you that you would, be, you would go and bear fruit, and that your fruit would remain, so that whatever you ask of the father in my name, he will give to you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for opening up our hearts, our minds, our ears to hear what your spirit says. Yeah. I thank you, Father, for even our faith rising because you're, you said in your word, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the, the word of God. Yeah. So as we hear your word of God, our faith level will rise yeah. and it will push back fear. It will push back despair. It will push back defeat from the enemy. And Father God, we as pastors, we step aside that you may step forward yes, and get the glory in all that we say and do. Father God, speak for your servant listens and, is, and your servant is here, hearing what you have to say. And Father God, we thank you in advance and we pray these things in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Here in the book of John, we can see where Jesus is writing. Uh, uh, he's writing literally saying that um, we are his friends if we do what he commands for us to do. He goes on to write or say that uh, we're no longer slaves, but we're friends. In other words, we're friends with Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, I love this particular passage because if you got an old school Bible, you'll see that this is written in red letters. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus that is literally speaking at this moment. And I believe Jesus is saying the same thing to each, each and every one of us that are here because we are the modern day disciples. Yes. We are the modern day believers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as he was writing or speaking this back in the day, he was literally speaking this so that we can take heed to his word today. And he's wanting us to know that we are friends. Yes. We're no longer slaves. We're not or no longer uh, just uh, people that serve because they're made to serve. Mm. But we're here to serve because we love to serve. Yeah. Um, as you serve your friend, you have a certain kind of heart with the way you serve. You have a certain kind of compassion with how you serve. And I just want us to begin to take that mindset because those that are here in the house of God that's serving, those that are there on Facebook Live and YouTube, you're serving. But I want you to know that you are a friend and more importantly, you have a friend in Jesus. Yeah. Because you have a friend in Jesus, you know your friend is never going to let you down. Amen. Uh, he won't disappoint you. He's a friend that you can confide in. Yeah. He's a friend that you can trust. He's a friend that you can believe in, yeah. knowing that he has your best interest at heart. Yeah. Even during the times that we're living in where it seems like people are dying left and right. Calamity is in the earth. Mm -hmm. The market is volatile. People don't know whether they are coming and going. But the good news is that if Jesus is your friend, yeah. everything is going to be all right. Man, that's the kind of friend that I want to have. I want to have a friend in Jesus. I want to know that he is my friend. Yes. Uh, the old song says, what a friend we have what in Jesus. A friend we have <laughs> you ready to in sing? Jesus. Oh, uh, my I can't sins sing tonight. and griefs <laughs> to, to bear. It ain't what coming out. <laughs> a privilege to care. Everything, Everything to God in prayer. In prayer. 
Yeah. Oh, what peace we often for, forfeit. So we can forfeit the peace. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Tell me why. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Come on, don't that song speak to you? Yeah, let you know you got to carry everything to God in prayer. Not just washing your hands. Yeah. Not just, you know, getting that hand sanitizer. But are you carrying your concerns? Yes. Your cares? Are you casting them on Jesus? Mm. He's there to carry our burden. He's there to carry our pain because we have a friend, friend in Jesus. In Jesus. And Jesus is our personal friend. Yeah. And we're talking about this thing being personal because we want to get everybody to understand that this thing is a relationship. Yes. Uh, when we define the word personal, it means intimate or private. It means something that is only for you or an individual. Uh, it's relationship. When I think about personal, we have personal friends. We know that those are people that are in our inner circle. Yeah. You're able to share with them. You're able to cry on their sh shoulders. You're able to depend on them. And when we say Jesus is our friend, he is that friend that will stick closer than a brother. Yes. Uh, anybody ever had a friend and that friend was closer to you than your own blood relative? Because there's something special uh, when there's a friendship that supersedes what blood can do. Sometimes uh, friends can stick closer than your very own brother. Mm -hmm. So friend, when Jesus said, I'm your friend, he's not talking about an acquaintance. He's talking about something intimate, somebody that you really can rely on, somebody that you can rest in. A friendship is somebody that you know has your back, somebody that you know, even when you get in a disagreement, you're going to circle back to it and y'all still friends. Yes. You know, there's something yeah. about a friend. You can have any kind of distance in between. You don't have to talk to that person every day. You can be away, but that person is still your friend. And that's how Jesus treats us. We have that type of relationship with God that although we do wrong and although we have times when we fall away, he's still right there and still calls us friends. Still got a friend in Jesus. He still yeah, says yeah, that yeah, we're his yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah. So that's the type of relationship that we should have and know that we have in Jesus. Amen. Because our relationship with God, it is personal. It's personal. We all have our individual personal with relationship with God. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, we have to know that Jesus is our BFF. Mm -hmm. He's our best friend forever mm. or best friend for life. Yes. You got to see that. Jesus is our best friend. And because he's our best friend, we got to make sure that our relationship that we're cultivating uh, with Jesus is something that is intimate. Yes. Something that is special. Um, I, I love this particular uh, message because it's putting me in the mindset of us not just um, just saying that God is a God um, that's out there, mm -hmm. but God is a God that's in here. Yes. Yeah, he's personal. Yes. He's on the inside of us. Yes. He talks to us. He has that uh, relationship with us to where he's able to speak to us. He's able to lead us. He's able to guide us. And I wanted you to begin to see this. And it, and it, and it is this. It is that a personal relationship with Jesus is not religion. Mm -mm. Because a relationship is a choice. But religion is by force. Religion is by force. Uh, some people are coming uh, to a, maybe like uh, the house of God or they're coming to uh, worship experiences because their parents is bringing them. Mm -hmm. That's out of religion. But when you have a choice to where you're saying, hey, I want to come to God for myself. Yes. I want to get in his presence for myself. I'm working out my salvation for myself. Self. It becomes personal. Mm -hmm. And this is why, you know, I'm a firm believer that you can't begin to put your own personal convictions on other people yeah. because everybody have their individual relationship yes. with God for themselves. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we got to get to this point to where we're developing that relationship, not because somebody else told us about Jesus, but because we're wanting to know who Jesus is 
for ourselves. Amen. And this thing is personal. Uh, I saw this quote and I thought it was funny. It says, religion is a guy in church thinking about fishing. But relationship is a guy out fishing thinking about God. Mm, it's good. something that's about good. having that relationship. When you have a relationship with someone, you sit there and you think about them. You dwell on who they are. You can be out and about doing life, but they just fall on your mind because you have that relationship. It's not something where you feel like you want to be somewhere else. But when you're locked into God, you're into who he is. You're all about who he is. You're not trying to uh, just do something just because mama said or daddy said or this is how they say it should be done. But this thing is personal. It's a relationship. I'm serving God because I love God. I'm serving God because me and him got this one on one thing and me and him in a, are in a relationship and I don't want to let him down. So I'm going to do everything I can to uphold the relationship that we have together because yes. this thing is personal. Yes, it's personal. Because every relationship is personal. But it has to be handled individually. Yeah. It has to be handled individually. Um, this, My thought is, um, because we know that our relationship with God is individual, mm -hmm. we have to act as if it is individual. This is where you can't begin to compare your relationship with God against somebody else mm -hmm. this is where you can't worry about what your husband is doing or what yeah. your wife is doing mm -hmm. this is where you can't necessarily worry about what your friends are doing yeah. or what your friends may think that you might need to do no 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 this thing is individual yes and when you realize your relationship with god is something personal yes you'll begin to not let other people deter how you walk and how you live concerning the things of God. Yes. I, I know we have relationship in this world and, and, and they're good. But at the same time, we got to understand our relationship with Jesus is the most important relationship that we can ever have. So if your friends don't serve Jesus, yeah. it shouldn't stop you from serving Jesus. Amen. If your friends don't want to praise Jesus, it shouldn't stop you from praising Jesus. If your friends don't want to worship Jesus, it shouldn't stop you from worshiping Jesus. Yeah. And get this, if people don't believe that Jesus is God, it shouldn't stop you from believing Jesus is God. Yeah. I'm a firm believer that I believe that Jesus is still a healer. Jesus is still a deliverer. Jesus is still a protector. And Jesus' blood still covers everything seen and unseen. Yeah. And I believe this. And this is what you have to believe as well. If you want your relationship to be what it needs to be. Amen. This thing is individual. It's about you and Jesus. Uh, you All together, that's it. If it's just you and God, that's good. Philippians 2 and 12 says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, uh -huh. not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That means that we have to do what we got to do in order to live a life that is pleasing to God. Uh -huh. We can't look at anybody else. We can't say that somebody should be doing this or the other. This thing is individual. Everybody has to have their own relationship with God. And this is what we're finding in this time. As we go through this pandemic, we got to have a relationship for God for ourselves. Yeah. There may be a day when we can't come together at all. Maybe the something will crash. Facebook will crash or whatever internet will crash and you can't even get a word online. There may come a time where there may be no access to be able to come into a house of God or to go on the internet and receive the word of God. Yes, That's yes. why this thing is individual. You got to get into that Bible for yourself and know God. You got to have a relationship with God. You can't just be uh, know of God. It's like kind of like Facebook friends where people think that they have a relationship with God simply because they know him or like people on my Facebook page. Some people are connected to me via Facebook, but they don't know me personally. Mm -hmm. And when I come into contact with them, sometimes I'll be out in Walmart or wherever, or maybe they hear us on the radio broadcast. And they'll say, hey, Pastor Zaya, oh, I enjoyed that word. And I sit there and I'm smiling because I don't know who they are. And then I'll try to ease in there and say, how do I know you? If I feel bold enough, sometimes <laughs> I don't. 
But it's the same way. Some of us have this outside relationship with God, and it's not intimate at all. He doesn't know you personally, and you don't know him personally. You don't have a connection with God where, because you haven't spent the time necessary to get to know who he is. So that's why we're talking about this thing being personal. It's individual. You got to dig in for yourself so you can know God. You can't get it, get it from your mama, your daddy, your sister, your pastor, your best friend. This thing has to be individual, and you have to know God on your own. Amen. For our personal relationship to be successful, we must take heed to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Luke 21 and 34 says this, but take heed to yourselves. Let your hearts be weighed down mm -hmm. with carousing with drunkenness yes. and cares of this life. And that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Yes. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things yes. that will come to pass mm. and to stand before the Son mm. of Man. I love it where it says we got to take heed for ourselves, yeah. uh, lest your hearts be weighed down. Mm -hmm. Now, let's begin to see what the scripture says, because I want you to see this, and I want to bring it to you in a modern-day view. Mm -hmm. Take heed for yourselves, yes. so your heart won't be weighed down with carousing. How will it be weighed down with carousing? With drunkenness. Mm -hmm. With drunkenness. Come on now. I want y'all to think with me. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it, it's been some things that have been shut down. But one of the things that they didn't shut down was <laughs> the liquor store. <laughs> come on, come on. You got to see this. They were trying to shut the church down. Mm. But they were trying to keep the liquor store open. Yeah. You got to see this in scripture. This is where the scripture is coming alive. Yeah. It's saying don't let your heart be weighed down. And the thought in the community was that they didn't want to close the liquor stores because that was the only way people can escape from their problems. Mm. But the word of God tells us something contrary. Yes. It tells us something different. It says, don't let your hearts be weighed down mm. with drunkenness. So in other words, the scripture is telling us to do something totally opposite yes. than this world has made available. Amen. So you got to see this. It's saying you got to take heed to this. And so many believers... That's not hearing the word of God. Mm. Oh, they just like, oh, man, the, 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 the liquor store open. Let me go get my yak. <laughs> Let me go get my hen. Yeah. Let me go, go, go get my Ciroc. Mm. And they're thinking everything is okay, not knowing their heart is being weighed down yes. because of their drunkenness. Mm. See, we're living in a time where the only thing that needs to spark your spirit is the word of God. Yes. It's your praise and your relationship with God. Yes. People are weighed down from the cares of life, mm. worrying if they're going to be furloughed. Yes, you might be furloughed, but if you understand that your source is in God yes. and your resource is your job, as long as you stay connected with your source, the resource is going to open back up for Amen. you. Amen. So you don't have no reason for your heart to be weighed down. So I just want to encourage you to... Take heed for yourself. Yes. Everybody is on different levels. Everybody is on different levels of maturity. But you got to make sure that you do it the word's way. Because if you want the best results for your life, mm. you got to do what the word says you should do. Amen. And Jesus thought it was important because if he's telling us to take heed for ourselves, and he began to share with the disciples that this these are some of the things that are going to happen in the last days. He said, before my return, all of these things, if you go back, uh, read all the way through the verse, you'll see that he's beginning to share with them. Tribulation is coming. Hard times is coming. All of these things are going to perilous times are coming. But he says, we got to take heed to ourselves because when those times come, we can't be turning to drunkenness. Yes. We can't be turning to carousing and having the cares of this world begin to saturate our lives. But we got to stay focused on the main thing what is the main thing this individual relationship that we have with him we got to make sure that when he comes back for his church he finds us praising and not giving glory to this world but giving glory to God amen. and I think that's what we need to focus on amen I wrote this thought and I didn't want to um 
paraphrase it so I typed it out so you can see it. Uh, just like in the natural, when we're in a committed relationship with someone, the things we used to do while we were single, we don't do anymore. There are a lot of things that change in our life when we decide to commit to one person in a relationship. Likewise, with our personal spiritual relationship with Christ, there should be some changes made as well. So we got to start making some changes when it comes to our relationship with God. Uh, any married people out there, you understand that when you were single, there's some stuff that you won't do when you're married. You can't be on dating apps. You can't go out and talk to all kind of different people. You can't browse and look around when somebody walked by you. You can't ask anybody for their phone numbers anymore because you are in a committed relationship. Likewise, when it comes to God, we're committed to him. Because we're in a committed relationship with Christ, there are some things that I simply cannot do because I love God. And I'm not going to disappoint my God because me and him in this thing together. Yeah. We're in a relationship, y'all. A love y'all. relationship. We're in a love relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And when you see him, you're going to see me because I'm, me and him are walking together hand in hand because this thing is personal. Amen. This thing is personal. Um, and as you begin to share, um, this is where we got to understand that, yes, we're walking with God. And because yeah. we have a love for God, um, our love level of our relationships might show different than somebody else's love level in their relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And we're in a time and we're in a season where it's going to begin to show where the people have different love relationships. Not to say that they aren't saved because, yes, they, they may be saved. But at the same time, there's different maturity levels. Yes. There's different uh, levels of love in certain relationships. Yes. So I just want you to begin to see that. This is a time where you got to get to know God yes. for yourself. Amen. You got to know him for yourself. You got to trust God for yourself. Yes. It can't be connected to uh, external friendships that we have. Mm -hmm. It can't be connected to external relationships that we have. Mm -hmm. Because if I can be honest with you, although, you know, I love my wife. Mm -hmm. I got to love God more yes. because that's the relationship that we have yes. and vice versa. I know for a fact, my wife loves God more than she loves me. Mm. And because of that, whatever their relationship is, I got to respect that because it is, it is where the scripture says you got to work out your own. own salvation. Yes. It didn't say you got to work out your husband's salvation or your friend's salvation or your cousin's salvation. You got to work out your personal salvation yes. in this season. Yes. So I just want to encourage those that um, that may be unsure on what to do and how they need to move or what they need to say or what they need to believe. You just need to keep your eyes on Jesus. Yes. And when you keep your eyes on Jesus, your relationship will continue to grow. Yeah. Because get this, what you behold, you will eventually become. Mm. When you keep your eyes on Jesus, you'll begin to behold his glory. You'll begin to behold who he is. And you'll begin to have that intimacy that you're really looking for to be in your relationship. Because everybody's relationship is different. But I'm one of the ones that I want my relationship with Jesus to be special. Amen. I want it to stick out. Yes. I want it to shine. Yes. I, I want people to look at the relationship that I have with God. And I want them to look at it and say, man, he really loved Jesus. Yes. Man, he really loves God. And, and, and this is the, the type of confidence that we should have as well. We should have a relationship with God to where others are able to look upon our life and say, man, him and Jesus, they really got something going on. Mm -hmm. They ain't worrying. They ain't got no fear going on because they know who they're connected to. Mm -hmm. So I just want to encourage those that are out there right now. Make sure your relationship with Jesus is tight because if it's tight, Everything will be all, all right. right. Yes. Give God some praise for that. 
I surely do miss the interactive Bible study yeah. because I wanted to ask a question. Get some I'm questions, thinking, yeah. Because yeah. I'm thinking about as you were talking and I started thinking about somebody's relationship. When people see a relationship and we see good relationships, we mm -hmm. can identify those. And people should be able to identify that we're in a relationship with Christ based on how we maneuver in our walk with him. Mm -hmm. When you see somebody who's a couple and you know that couple is you know, they, their relationship is strong. You can see that. Mm -hmm. Likewise, with our relationship with Christ, people should be able to see that we love God. There are some things that are going to show up because we love Jesus. There are some things that are going to be a part of who we are. Um, when we're in a relationship, uh, think about somebody's dating. You're going to see that other person. You're going to see them together. When we're with, when we're in a relationship with Christ, people should see us with Christ together, together. all the time. We want to be where yeah, they yeah, are yeah, yeah. at all times. When somebody's in that that beginning relationship, you want to be where they are. You want to be in their space. You want to be in their atmosphere. Likewise with God, we should want to be where He is. We should want to be in His <laughs> atmosphere. We should yeah, want to talk yeah. to Him at all times. We should want to be in an intimate setting with God. Yeah. Yeah. If we seek after having intimacy with the ones that we're in relationship with naturally, how much more should we want to be intimate in that private time with Jesus? Yes, because yes, it's yes, a yes. personal thing. If we say, okay, God, I love you, and I'm in a relationship with you, there's no way your relationship will last if you treated uh, the relationship that you have with God, if you treated it like you do uh, if somebody, if you treated it with a natural relationship, yes, yes. For instance, if you never spend some time with your spouse, and some of us never spend time in prayer, there's no communication. Then we would say your your relationship is having problems. If you're never ever around your spouse, many of us will say, "Well, something wrong with that." There's there's a relationship issue going on. A disconnect. A somewhere. disconnect it's somewhere. A disconnect going on. So if we never want to be in the house of God, we never want to be around the things of God. We never want to talk to God. We never want to be intimate with Him. If a, if you have a relationship with your spouse and y'all ain't getting busy, something wrong. Something wrong something, with that relationship. Something something just ain't right. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. So yeah. there's a there's a disconnect. So if we never get intimate time with Jesus, if you can't get close enough to hold him, if you can't get close enough to wrap yourself in the presence of God, Hallelujah. if you can't get in his presence and just let yourself go and just let him have his way in your Hallelujah. heart where you just begin to worship and tears begin to flow down your face and you have that intimate time with him. If you haven't had that experience, there is something missing in your relationship. If we're not having that intimate time with God, then we got to find out what's going on individually. Amen. Because uh, as you were talking, I began to um, recall, you know, uh, early relationships and all of us have had them mm -hmm. where we're just gung ho over the person that we're in relationship with. Yeah. Um, I remember, you know, sometimes where I may have been feeling uh, a certain way toward uh, a, a young lady and um, we'll be on a, on a phone call having a conversation. Uh, we'll be talking. Oh, we'll be nice. sharing our heart. Mm -hmm. We'll be uh, talking about this, that, and the other. Um, before we know it, an hour have gone. Mm -hmm. Two hours have gone. Mm -hmm. Three hours. And now we're in the wee hours of the night, mm -hmm. about to fall asleep. And we're saying, you hang up. You hang up. No, I ain't gonna hang no, up. No, you I, hang up. Uh, and we. <laughs> you sleep. You, uh, I, no, I, I ain't, ain't sleep. sleep. No, I, 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 I ain't sleep. And, and we and we know we tired. Yeah. But we don't want to disconnect the phone. Yes, because we, we want to be together. Want to hang that's how those, up the phone. That's how they were on that cruise ship. Yes. <laughs> I remember us being on the cruise when we went on the church cruise. A couple of the singles, they were just out late at night, and I seen one of them. They were just so tired. I was like, you're not ready to go to bed, but they just wanted to be together to be all together. night, yes. walking around the cruise ship, half sleep. One of them will sleep at the table. I won't make mention of their name, yeah. but they just want to be together. Yeah. And that's how we are when we are in a serious relationship with God. Wanna you want to be, be with him at come on, all come times. On, come on, come on. And, 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 and y'all got to see this, and I'm going to say it. And, and people wonder why, you know, I still want to... Um, 
I have that personal relationship with God where I fulfill scripture, where mm -hmm. I remember the scripture that says, don't forsake gathering together as many will do in the last day. The reason why I'm working on that thing is because I got a personal relationship with God. Yes. And although I know the coronavirus is out there and Rona is real yes. and Rona is taking people out, but yet I got a personal relationship with God that where I know that he's a healer yes. if I get sick. Yes. You, 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 you got to see this. I, I'm working on something, y'all. And, and during this time, this is a time of testing. And I want to make sure that I pass the test knowing yes. that I gave this thing my everything. Yes. I gave this thing all that I got. Yes. Because I'll be a fool to preach that God is a healer, that God is a deliverer, yes. that God is a protector when I don't really believe it myself. Yes. But this is the time where I can really stand up and say, for God I live and for God I die. Yes. I'm here to declare and decree that, yes, he is my healer. Yes, he is my protector. And no matter what happens to me, everything's still going to be all right. Amen. Because I'm working on something, y'all. Yes, this thing, this is, thing personal. is personal. Yes, it is. This is me and Jesus. Yes. It don't have anything to do with nobody in here. It don't have anything to do with nobody on Facebook. Yes. This is my own personal relationship with God. Yes. Because I believe that if, if, if the vipers was able to bite Paul mm. and he was able to survive it. Yes. Surely if I get a coronavirus, God is able to heal me. Yes. That's just how I believe. Yes. But it's because I'm working on my personal relationship with him. Amen. Because I got a friend in Jesus. Amen. And don't take someone else's relationship and compare it to your own. Likewise, in a marriage or you see somebody that's in a relationship, you can't take your relationship and say, oh, well, I want mine to be like theirs. Mm. We can't do that. This thing is personal. It's individual. All of us have our own personal relationship with God. If you feel like you want to stay home, that's why we put it out there. Please stay, stay home. home. We encourage our partners to watch on Facebook Live, to watch on YouTube. We don't want anybody in the building that does not want to be here. Plus, we got a capacity. But we only <laughs> we begin to say it's only essential staff here in the facility because we know that this thing is personal. It's up to those who want to be able to be in the house. There's no problem and I told all of our uh, partners early on that we can't look at somebody who is desiring to shelter and say well they ain't got no faith you can't say that mm -mm, mm -mm. you don't know what they have going on in their relationship we can't judge people and we can't judge a person just because they got crazy faith mm -hmm. we got to be individual with this yes, thing yes it's, per it's personal it's personal it's personal, it's personal. Yes. so don't tell me how to walk with God and I won't tell you how you should walk with God Ooh. all of us have this thing that's personal we got to go with God for ourselves yeah. when we get to heaven he's not going to be asking you about me he's going to be asking you about you come on that's so real this thing is personal we got to make sure that we are one-on-one -on -one with God and him alone because when we're walking with the God in this thing we got to have this whole relationship together I can't enter in your relationship I would be a fool to come in your house and tell y'all what to do at your own residence I can't do that Likewise, we can't look at somebody's relationship with God and tell them what to do with their relationship. Mm -hmm. That's between them and their God. Our job as pastors is to sow the word, give the word, feed the sheep. I'm not following nobody home. Mm -mm. I don't care what you're doing in your personal life. I'm giving you the word. I'm throwing out that seed. You got to grab that seed and apply it to your life. But I can't follow nobody home. Yes, yes. And, and that's what the scripture says. Uh, scripture says, Peter, if you love me, yeah. feed my sheep. Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure the Lord can say to us, well, well done, done, my good and faithful, faithful yes. servant faith full my faith is full and we want to be that particular servant mm. so when we're in a relationship it shows yeah it shows like this number one because we'll keep his commandments mm. we'll keep his commandments yeah. first john two and three says this and by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep, keep his, commandments. his commandments yeah whoever says i know him but does not keep his commandments is a liar mm. And the truth is not in him. Mm. But whoever keeps his word, yes. in him truly the love of God is 
perfected. Perfected. Ooh, yes. that's good. By this we may know that we are in him. Yes. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walks. Mm -hmm. In other words, you know, uh, if you, you got to be willing to practice what you preach yes. and preach what you practice. Mm -hmm. This is a time and a season where you can't preach, you know, money coming and God is going to give you this house and this car and mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. Nobody ain't wanting to hear that. Mm -hmm. What people are wanting to hear is that God is still a healer. Yes, he God is. is still a deliverer. Yes. God is still a protector. Yes. But you got to believe it for yourself. How can you preach something that you don't really believe deep down on the inside mm -hmm. of you? But this is where we got to begin to come back to say, hey, if God said it in his word, I believe it. And that settles it in my heart. Yes. So we as believers, just as the scripture says, we he he'll know him. that we love him by the commandments that we keep. Yes. And another way that we'll show we're in relationship with God is we'll love one another. And that's big. John 13, 35 says, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. One another. We got to have this love walk. If we want to look like Christ, if we want our relationship to be on the up and up, we got to have our love thing together. If my relationship with God is not like yours, I can't come and butt up against you. I got to love you. I got to love you the way Christ told me to love you. I can't have hate for you as my brother or my sister in Christ. I got to love you like Christ told me to love you. And that is all. And we can't have all that superficial type of love. We're talking about having that agape type of love that no strings attached. We love you because we love you and not because what you can do for me, not because of how you act or nothing like that. But we have to have love for one another. Amen. Ephesians uh, 5 and 1 says this, you are God's dear children, so try to be like him. Live a life of love. Love others just as Christ loved us. Yes. He gave himself for us. A sweet smelling, save, excuse me, a sweet smelling offering and sacrifice to God. But there must be no sexual sin among you. There must not be any kind of evil or selfishness wanting more and more. Because such things are not right for God's holy people. Yeah. Also, there must be no evil talk among you. Don't say things that are foolish or filthy. Yes. These are not for you. But you should be giving thanks to God. Mm -hmm. The third thought was, we want to walk. We, excuse me. We won't walk or live in the flesh. As believers, we got to make sure that we're not living in the flesh. We got to make sure that we're uh, walking according to God's precepts. We got to make sure we're doing what God says uh, that we should do. Um, if we're walking and dealing in uh, things that are not pleasing to God, we need to begin to get out of them so that we can line up and be the best version yeah. that we can be for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Again, we got to work out our own salvation. This yeah. is something that is personal yes. um, our personal relationship are on different levels yes. but we've got to be willing to understand what level we're on mm -hmm. and be willing to go from level to level yes. from faith to faith from glory to glory yes we know uh, all of us are uh, have different challenges and different temptations and different things that we deal with mm -hmm. but at the end of the day when you love somebody you're willing to make the change I'll say that one more time. This is how you know you love somebody. Mm -hmm. When you're willing to make the change. Yeah. I remember I was, uh, as a single man, you know, I was afraid to get married. I said I was going to get married about 35-ish. Man, I got married at 21. <laughs> 21. What's 9 plus 3? 21. 21. 21. 21. <laughs> yeah. 21. I got married at 21. I said I was going to get married at 30, 35. Nah, I was nah, going nah. out there, you know, do my thing and all that kind of stuff. Mm. But I got bit <laughs> by the love bug. <laughs> the love bug bit me. Uh, I entered into a committed relationship. Uh-huh. One thing led to another. Clank, clank. <laughs> Twelve years of slave. <laughs> no, no, no. One thing led to another. 
but it allowed me to make changes. I had to make changes, and I remember doing this. When I entered into a committed relationship with my wife, I had to call all my girlfriends and tell them it was over. Yeah, Y'all laughing. Y'all must be did of... that too. Y'all must be did that too. Don't call me no yeah. more. Yeah. I just blocked you just block the numbers. Yeah. yeah. You, you got you gotta gotta change your beeper number where they can't page you. With the upside down numbers, and you already know what time it is. You got you got to change all that. You're telling your age. Oh lord. <laughs> yeah. But I had to call all of my girlfriends to let them know it was over. It's over now. You you just having too much fun with this. I my feel God. like God can make it. <laughs> but. Get this, because I loved her, mm. I was willing to make the change. Yes. You got to see this. When you get to a place mm -hmm. to where you love someone, yes. you don't mind making the change. Yeah. You might make some mistakes, but you don't mind keep changing. Yeah. You keep getting better. And keep growing in the love and keep growing in the intimacy so that you can be the best version of you that you can be mm. in the relationship that you have. Yes. This is where we are right now. This thing is personal. Yes, it is. It's not about necessarily whether you stay home or whether you come. Or whether you feel like you got no faith at home or you got faith where you come in church. No, no, no. I ain't saying that. What I am saying is, when you love Jesus, yes. you don't mind making the changes necessary in your life yes. to get better and better and better. Yes. That's what true intimacy is. Yes. It's something that's deep. It's something that, that are there to where it's a connection that yeah. is there. Yeah. And you're longing to be your best because the best version of you that you can be is the best version of you that you can mm -hmm. give to that person. Yeah. And that's where we all are right now. Mm -hmm. We're just wanting to challenge you to continue to get better in Jesus. Yeah. Continue to work on your faith wall. Yeah. Continue to work on your trust wall. Yes. Continue to work on your own personal wall. Yeah. That's why the scripture says work out your own, own salvation. salvation with fear and trembling yes. to Jesus. Because obedience to God will always be the byproduct of a personal relationship. When you're in a relationship with God, obedience is going to follow. Because when you want to do right and you love somebody, yeah, yeah. you do right yeah, yeah. by that person. Yeah. So obedience will come when you get connected to God. Obedience is going to be a part of what you do on a daily basis. We can't think that you know, you just, you're sacrificing and nothing is going to come out of it. No. Obedience is going to come yeah, out of yeah, it. Yeah. You're going to grow. You're going to develop. You're going to begin to get the things that you need for your spirit, man. Your relationship is going to get tighter when you become more intimate with God. And here's some personal spiritual relationship improvement tools uh, that we can use to get closer to God. The first thing is we got to spend time together. You've never had a relationship where you haven't spent time. You got to spend time with God. If you're home and you're watching us on Facebook, you got to spend time with God. Yeah. It ain't it doesn't have anything to do with the building. No. You got to spend time with God at your home. You got to spend time with God. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the building. In this time, you got to know that your growth is not connected to a four walls of a church. Yes. Your growth is connected to you personally. Yes. So this thing is personal. We got to take this thing and begin to apply it to our lives. And we got to spend time with God. You got to create your own worship atmosphere. You got to create your own prayer time. You got to create your own intimacy time with the Father. 
because who knows when we're going to come back collectively as a body. But you got to begin to get together with God on your own yes. and tap into come the glory on, of God where you, are. where you are. You can pray in tongues yes. at your house. Yes. You can go in your prayer closet and go before God at your home. You can be in your car and give God the glory. This thing is personal. It has nothing to do with the building, but it has everything. Come. Some people can't they come can't because come they're sick here. or they're dealing with certain illnesses yes. and they might be in that age bracket. But it should not stop you from giving God his just due. Absolutely not. And you got to see this. The same commitment that you may have had coming to the house of God at 7 o'clock. That's mm -hmm. the same commitment that you should same. have tuning in on at Facebook. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, you know, yes. It, it, we're talking Some about people that online and late. How you late online? <laughs> You late on the Facebook. We got to have this same relationship. Just like if we were in the building, we yeah. got to have that same relationship. Yeah. We yeah. can't pause and go in the kitchen and cook and then come back in to watch the lamb. i catch it in a minute. I don't need to praise and worship. No, you got to have this thing on lock. You got to spend time with God no matter where you are. And you got to stay connected with the body of Christ. Amen. Our personal spiritual relationship improvement tools. Number one, spend time together. Mm -hmm. Number two, you got to talk often. You got to see this. When you're in that uh, relationship, especially at first, y'all want to talk. You want to get to know everything about the person. You want to talk, talk, talk. You never want to hang up or disconnect the line. Likewise, with our personal relationship with Jesus, we should talk to him all day, all, day. all night. Paul said, I pray uh, more than ye all in tongues. You got to see this. He talked to God all day, all night, never wanting to hang up, never wanting to disconnect because he wanted that personal intimate relationship with God. Number three, you got to build trust. Yeah. You got to build trust. I said I made a statement that uh, trust is given, but some trust is earned. Yeah. And as you continue to trust God, you'll start developing something mm. with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Number four, stay away from breaking his heart. Yeah. Stay away from breaking his heart. Don't do those things that, gre uh, that grieve Holy Spirit. Yeah. Don't do those things that are reproach against the things of God. Continue to try to live as up and up as you can. Yeah. And number five, speak about him oh. often. Yeah. Yes, when you love somebody, you don't mind telling nobody, mm -mm. telling other people about who you're in relationship with. Yeah, you talk about you happy the time. about that. Yeah. Yeah, you're happy about the relationship that mm -hmm. you have. Showing you're not pictures. Yeah, showing pictures. Mm -hmm. But but what get me is people that's in relationships that's scared to post pictures. Mm. Why, why are you scared to post pictures of the person you're involved with? <laughs> you're trying to keep it on the down low. A shame. You you're you're afraid. Uh huh. You scared to tell people you love Jesus? Mm. You scared of persecution? Mm. You scared of the repercussions? Mm. You scared to, to speak and tell somebody mm. that God has been good to you? No, yeah. no, no. When you love somebody, you don't mind talking about yeah. them often. Yeah. Because they're the best thing smoking. Yes. And that's how we should feel about Jesus as well. Amen. He's the best thing smoking. Man, I'm telling y'all, I've been serving Jesus for a long time. Yes. And I ain't got tired yes, yet. Yes, and I ain't got tired yet. Our relationship is still good. Yes. I love him more now than I ever loved him before. Yeah. I thought I loved him back then. Yeah. But I'm telling you, that was just puppy love. Mm -hmm. Our love has grown yes. because I'm working on something, y'all. Amen. This thing is personal. Yes. And I want God to say at the end of my life, well done, yes. my good and faithful servant. Yes. Come on, let's give God some praise. That's all we have for you tonight.